Hi, this presentation is based on data from NuclearPower.com, which is a powerful source of information on physics and energy. In this presentation, we will tell you a brief story of energy. You will learn how much we depend on energy, what types of energy sources exist and why hydrogen is not a source of energy. Then we will shortly discuss climate change and energy security. Finally you will find out what the low carbon balanced energy mix is. Energy is essential for most activities of modern society. Access to abundant, affordable, secure, safe, and clean energy is beneficial for humans. We use energy in the form of firewood, fossil fuels, and electricity to make life comfortable and convenient. Every product you have at home is most likely made of materials, which were obtained from Earth using a lot of energy. At home, we use electricity for our lights and fans, water heaters and room heaters, ovens, microwaves, and washing machines. We use petrol, diesel, CNG for our cars, trucks, and buses. A large amount of energy is consumed in agriculture and industry. Humanity consumes enormous amounts of energy. And this amount is constantly growing. In order to understand the broader context, it is necessary to consider how much energy we use. Global direct primary energy consumption in 2020 was about 160,000 terawatt hours. That's a really huge amount of energy. To illustrate, we'll convert the whole thing to coal. Assuming that the calorific value of hard coal is 24 gigajoules per metric ton, then we are talking about the equivalent of 24 billion metric tons of coal. That's about 20 billion cubic meters. This is equivalent to 300 million wagons of coal. Just imagine it. Back to the chart. Please note that the world's main primary energy sources consist of oil, 34%, coal, 27%, and natural gas, 24%, amounting to an 85% share for fossil fuels in primary energy consumption in the world. Energy consumption is constantly increasing. The share of individual energy sources also does not change significantly. We are totally dependent on fossil fuels, despite all efforts to decarbonize the economy. Oil, coal, and natural gas. Please do not forget that this energy gives us sustenance, products, warmth, and life in general. So it is not fair to just blame fossil sources. We all have to start with ourselves first. But why are we so much talking about fossil fuels? There are three problems, or perhaps rather challenges, associated with fossil fuels. Climate change. Sustainability of fossil energy. And energy security. The first and most cited issue is climate change. Climate change is a real problem. That's a fact. Scientific evidence for warming of the climate system is unequivocal. You face it now, and especially your descendants will face it in the near future. Climate change threatens people with food and water scarcity, increased flooding, extreme heat, more disease, and economic loss. It can also drive human migration. According to NASA, human activities, primarily the burning of fossil fuels, have fundamentally increased the concentration of greenhouse gases in Earth's atmosphere and warming the planet. Natural drivers, without human intervention, would push our planet toward a cooling period. You can visit their fantastic website climate.nasa.gov. Global warming is simply going on, and it is a fact that carbon dioxide emissions are significantly accelerating this warming. Future warming depends on the strengths of climate feedback and further emissions of greenhouse gases. Nobody wants to scare anyone unnecessarily, and most people say it's practically none of my business, and they're right. People are generally not motivated to avoid long-term threats to their existence. Unfortunately, acting on climate change represents a trade-off between short-term and long-term benefits, which is the hardest trade-off for people to make. Ignoring climate change in the short term has benefits individuals and organizations. The problem is that climate changes are a multi-generational problem. In the case of long-term disregard of the problem, irreversible global changes can occur. So you may be lucky that it only affects you minimally, 
but it will certainly affect your descendants. Let's sum it up. It's a fact. We have to accept it. Let's take it as a challenge and not a problem. Every challenge has a solution. Let's talk about sustainability. According to the definition, energy is sustainable if it meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. We won't scare anyone. It is fact that in the foreseeable future, fossil fuels are not limited by resource depletion. However, environmental concerns based on climate change and other environmental effects need to be eliminated before fossil fuels can be considered sustainable. Moreover, the amount of fossil fuels consumed annually is really huge. Let us recall the equivalent of coal. 300 million wagons of coal per year. That's the point. The final issue and perhaps one of the most visible today is energy security. This is especially true for countries with significant energy imports. Access to relatively cheap energy has become essential to the functioning of modern economies. However, the uneven distribution of energy supplies among countries has led to significant vulnerabilities. International energy relations have contributed to the globalization of the world leading to energy security and energy vulnerability at the same time. If we look at the map, it is clear that some parts of the world, such as Europe, are highly vulnerable in this regard. The map shows proven oil reserves. For example, the European Union and China are among the largest importers of energy in the world. In the case of natural gas, the map is different, but the distribution of natural gas reserves in the world is very similar. Therefore, the overall decarbonization of the economy does not only concern climate change, but its goal should also be to increase the level of energy security. Before discussing a solution to this problem, we need to define possible energy sources. Therefore, we need to define what are so-called primary energy sources. The primary energy source is an energy resource found in nature that has not been subjected to any conversion or transformation process. It is the energy contained in raw fuels and other forms of energy received as input to a system. It's all about the fact that sources like hydrogen, electricity, and other synthetic fuels belong to secondary energy sources, so they must be produced from primary energy sources. Secondary energy sources are only energy carriers, because they move energy in a usable form from one place to another. Hydrogen is not a source of energy. Please note that any conversion of primary energy to energy carriers is associated with some inefficiency, which is often very high. But which types of energy can be found in nature? What are the primary energy sources? Primary energy sources take many forms, including solar, fossil, nuclear, geothermal and tidal energy. The primary energy source for solar, wind, hydropower, and biofuels is the sun. It is heated to incandescence by nuclear fusion reactions in its core, radiating the energy mainly as visible light, ultraviolet light, and infrared radiation. It is by far the most important energy source for life on Earth. Fossil fuels are hydrocarbon-containing materials formed underground from the remains of dead plants and animals. Fossil energy is a type of stored solar energy. These fuels are found in the Earth's crust and contain carbon and hydrogen, which can be burned for energy. The main fossil fuels are coal, petroleum, and natural gas, which humans extract through mining and drilling. Nuclear energy comes either from spontaneous nuclei conversions or induced nuclei conversions. Because humankind has learned to control the transformation of nuclei, nuclear energy is also one of the primary energy sources. Geothermal energy is heat within the Earth, which originates from the planet's formation and the radioactive decay of materials. The decay heat of uranium and thorium and their decay products contribute to heating the Earth's core. Together with potassium-40 in the Earth's mantle, these elements are the main source of heat that keeps the Earth's core liquid. Tidal energy is a form of power produced by the natural rise and fall of tides caused by the gravitational interaction between Earth, the Sun, and the Moon. Ultimately, nuclear reactions form the basis for four of the five possible energy sources on planet Earth. Primary energy sources are not only consumed in power plants. 
Industry, transportation, and the residential sector consume even more primary resources than electricity generation. Electricity generation consumes around one-third of primary energy. Most efforts are being made to decarbonize this sector. Despite this, we are still very far from decarbonization. Only a few countries, such as France, Sweden, and Norway, managed to achieve significant decarbonization of the electricity sector. On average, electricity production is still heavily dependent on fossil sources. The transportation sector accounted for 30% of energy consumption in 2020. Most energy used for transportation comes from crude oil. Recently, there has been a lot of thought about electric vehicles. However, generating the electricity used to charge electric vehicles is associated with fossil fuel consumption. The amount varies widely based on how local power is generated. Residential, commercial, and industrial sectors account for the last third of primary energy. Natural gas, used especially for space heating, dominates this sector. The problem is that most of this energy is consumed in large amounts during few winter months. On this slide, you can see the data of the U.S. Energy Information Administration. You can see the energy consumption by source and sector in 2020. An excellent representation of the relationship between primary energies and end-use sectors. So what is the solution? The future is the low-carbon balanced energy mix of primary energy sources. What does it mean? Low carbon means a mix of energy sources with an overall lower carbon footprint. In 2014, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change harmonized the carbon dioxide equivalent findings of the major electricity generating sources in use worldwide. Coal is the worst emitter, followed by natural gas, with solar, wind, and nuclear all low carbon. Hydropower, biomass, geothermal, and ocean power may generally be low carbon but poor design or other factors could result in higher emissions from individual power stations. It is obvious, renewables have an irreplaceable role. If carbon dioxide emissions were the only criterion, everything would be clear. But the situation is not so simple. We live in a world where the laws of physics apply and, moreover, in a world of competitive economic markets. From this point of view, the future energy mix must be balanced. The term balanced is associated with grid stability. For the electric grid, generation and power usage must be balanced across the entire grid because energy is consumed as it is produced. When the balance between power usage and power generation volume is lost, the frequency or voltage fluctuates, and the power quality of the power supply cannot be assured. This may cause damage to devices connected to the grid. In other words, the grid must somehow react to each light bulb being lit, and power plants must increase production. Currently, 50 Hz is the common frequency utilized in the majority of the world's electricity systems. In the US, the normal frequency is 60 Hz. This frequency is controlled within tight limits, typically within plus or minus 150 MHz in large networks. If the power usage rises, or the production of variable sources decreases, the grid frequency decreases. In fact, all rotating generators, synchronized with the grid are slowed as well. From a frequency below 47.5 Hz are all power plants disconnected from the power grid, and then the network has to be rebuilt. This is the blackout scenario. The system has its own inertia. Energy is stored in the immediate short term by the rotational kinetic energy of the generators. With the move to more wind and photovoltaics, the inertia in the systems will be reduced. System inertia refers to the kinetic energy stored in large generators' rotating mass, such as those found in fossil fuel-based power plants. System inertia is vital for maintaining a stable frequency level. During the day, consumption changes very significantly. Electricity producers must react to these changes in consumption by immediately changing production. The grid regulator controls the changes. But only, so-called, controllable or dispatchable sources can be used for such purposes. 
Controllable sources produce energy on demand at the request of power grid operators, according to market needs. These sources include nuclear power, hydropower, biomass, or relatively constant sources, such as geothermal power. We must not forget classic sources such as coal and gas power plants, where carbon dioxide emissions can be significantly reduced by carbon capture and storage technology. Since these controllable sustainable sources can follow the grid load, they drastically reduce the demands of variable renewables on the transmission and energy storage systems. Renewable sources are among the so-called variable sources, or non-dispatchable. Renewable sources cannot or have limited ability to adjust their power output to match electricity demand. These resources not only cannot respond to changes in demand, but their production is also variable. Variable renewable energy sources are not dispatchable due to their fluctuating nature, such as wind power and solar power. When it's cloudy or the wind isn't blowing, the grid needs more energy from other sources. Characteristics of variable renewables include their unpredictability, variability, small size, low running costs, and the fact that they are constrained to a certain location. Moreover, the highest energy consumption for most countries is in autumn and winter, when there is little wind inland and little sun. These factors challenge grid operators that must ensure supply and demand are matched. Solutions include energy storage, demand response, availability of overcapacity, and sector coupling. The higher the share of these sources in the energy mix, the higher the transmission and energy storage systems demands. Please note that, neither renewable resources nor storage systems are free. In fact, renewables tend to make very large demands on resources to construct the plant used for harnessing the natural energy. Wind turbine plants need over 10 times the amount of steel, 15 times the amount of copper, and more than twice the amount of other critical minerals than nuclear power per kilowatt-hour output. Energy storage systems are only about critical materials, such as lithium, cobalt and rare elements. Now back to the word balanced. The term balanced means that the share of variable sources is limited and they must balance with controllable low carbon sources that provide a stable energy supply during all seasons and periods up to weeks or months. Otherwise, the overcapacity of variable sources and energy storage systems would dramatically increase the costs of produced energy. An important MIT study states that Various low-carbon technologies can be employed in various combinations, the MIT analysis shows the potential contribution nuclear can make as a grid-controllable low-carbon technology. Without that contribution, the cost of achieving deep decarbonization targets increases significantly. A big share of nuclear, a big share of renewables, and some storage are the best mix that is low-carbon, reliable, and at the lowest cost. Without nuclear, demands on the overcapacity of renewables, transmission system, and energy storage systems would result in excessive use of land and resources. That's their summary, and we fully agree with them. And finally what about the word mix? It's all about the fact that nothing is perfect and we are not looking for the perfect source, but the optimal mix of sources for the given conditions. Experts, physical laws, and natural conditions of individual countries are sometimes ignored when designing national and international energy strategies. Although renewables are the main sustainable primary resource, their intermittency must be considered. It's all about the balanced energy mix. Using a diverse portfolio of energy resources allows electric companies to balance the output of variable sources like solar and wind and use the most cost-effective resources available to provide customers with the safe, reliable, and affordable energy they need. Ensuring reliability under all circumstances, including weather extremes and emergencies, requires energy companies to use 24-7 energy sources, such as nuclear energy, natural gas, hydropower, and coal, to generate reliable energy consistently. So that, remember, there are two general rules. The proposal of a future energy mix must always respect the laws of physics. And the proposal of a sustainable energy mix must always consider the specific geographical conditions of a given country. We hope you have gained an insight into future energy. If you want to know more, visit nuclearpower.com, 
and don't forget to subscribe.